What's wrong with a glass of wine, a beer or something stronger at the end of a hectic day? Well, if you believe the results of the world's largest study into the risks of alcohol, everything. The sobering news is researchers have found there is no such thing as safe drinking. They say even one glass a day is bad for us. Put simply, just like tobacco and obesity, alcohol is a killer and is claiming more and more lives, as most of us remain in denial about how much we really drink. Lads in lederhosen and beer steins as big as your head. Welcome to the world's largest drinking festival, the iconic Oktoberfest in Munich. It's fair to say everyone here samples their fair share of the local produce. How are you travelling, big fella? <laughs> you like the fluffy thing, do you? Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey. You're like Braveheart. Freedom! <laughs> the Germans have been celebrating here for centuries. And in recent decades, Young Aussies, with their love of a good time, have well and truly got on board. How many of these do you reckon you'll get through today? The library's for eight to ten. Eight to eight, ten litres. Yeah, I bet ten litres will get me. That's a equivalent to about a case. And then you have a good sleep and then you get straight back into it tomorrow. Getting drunk isn't the name of the game for plenty of festival goers, but for just about everyone at Oktoberfest, having a drink is a key component of a good time. I think it makes yeah, it like, it is. It's if you're going to go out, you're going to have a drink. So It's part of the culture, I think. Yeah. It's definitely, yeah. I think it's part of Australian culture, really. Yes, we love a drink, and probably no more so than this time of year. Christmas parties, end of year breakups, sometimes just because the sun's out. In fact, in Australia, half the time we don't need a reason or a season to enjoy a drink. It's just what we do. And even if you're only planning on having one or two, you probably console yourself with those news articles we see all the time that not only do a couple of a day do you no harm, they might actually be good for your health. Well, not anymore. A landmark study in the most prestigious medical journal in the world, The Lancet, has declared for the very first time that there is no safe level of alcohol consumption. Even a glass a day could be deadly. As soon as you start consuming alcohol, you're more likely to die. That's correct. That's correct. And what we're finding is that in the older age groups, alcohol is responsible for about 25% uh, of deaths in women uh, and one in five men will die as a result of alcohol. Professor Sonia Saxena from London's Imperial College is one of the authors of this controversial paper which bluntly says there is not a single health benefit from drinking. We've heard that alcohol does reduce your chances of heart disease, but you say there's 23 detrimental health effects. What are those? There's a wide range of poor health effects. So it does include um, significant conditions like diabetes, um, cardiovascular disease, cancers, liver disease, cirrhosis. Um, those sorts of things um, are much more likely. If you're having a, a couple of wines a night with dinner or a couple of beers at the pub after work, you know, that's about six standard drinks for the wine. How much are you increasing your chance of death when, when you're consuming that much a day? I think that the answer to that is that's actually quite a lot and that will increase your um, risk of having one of these 23 conditions by a third. A 30% increase? A 30% increase. It's a grim warning, but maybe that's what's needed because it's no secret most of us just love cracking a drink to quench a hard-earned thirst. But how much are we drinking? Well, we enlisted a couple of people to track their alcohol intake last week. 
Melissa Coutts is one of the stars of The Real Housewives of Sydney, so naturally has seen her fair share of champagne-fuelled soirees. So I would have had five champagnes, because I'm telling you, the hangover that I had the next day was not worth it. I swear, I, I wanted to die. I was so ill, it was awful. She began keeping her drinking diary for us on Melbourne Cup Day. Can you tell me one horse racing today? Absolutely not. Can you tell me the brand of champagne they've got here? Merck, <laughs> uh, Bollinger, uh, Maui. Jacob Wesson is your quintessential Aussie bloke who's all about beer. In fact, he loves it so much, he works on the production line at a brewery. I've heard of wearing your heart on your sleeve. Not, not far off it there. Yeah. What's this? Basically, I'm so passionate about my, my job that um, I decided to get six different hop varieties on my arm. Um, consisting yeah, of... Hang on, there's one more tattoo as well, isn't there? Oh, uh, there is one on my ribs. I've got the four main ingredients on my ribs of beer as well. <laughs> so I'm a little bit uh, passionate about Fair to beer. say you love a beer. Yeah, and uh, I love my job, so... <laughs> I, the two of them don't good. believe a few drinks for fun from time to time is dangerous, as the groundbreaking new medical study suggests. And they're not alone. Is one drink a day harmful? For me, I don't think it, one drink a day would, would harm me. Not in any measurable way. Does this help you play or oh, hinder, yeah, definitely, hinder your performance? Definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> it couldn't make it worse. Professor David Spiegelhalter loves a game of pool and a beer. And he also likes breaking apart a study like this in his work at the esteemed Cambridge University. He's crunched the numbers and says the authors simply got it wrong. I'm a statistician. I love numbers, and I, I hate to see them being abused. I hate to see statistical evidence you know, so, but, being but misused. That's a strong word, abuse. Oh, yes, yeah. I, I, number abuse is a sort of term I use for, for where people are, are, are taking numbers and, and essentially turning them into misinformation. They claim that if you have one drink a day, then your risk of getting one of so, 23 different conditions goes up by 0.5% per year. So that's if you believe those figures. But even that figure is very uncertain indeed. They've got huge margins of error on that claim. So the idea that there's no safe level of alcohol from this study, I don't think stands up to scrutiny. One of the main criticisms of the study declaring all alcohol consumption harmful is that it doesn't factor in the enjoyment people get from a few drinks at a social event. It's very difficult to measure those positive facts. How do you measure the enjoyment from having a drink? OK, you know, there's no, maybe no safe level of drinking, you, if you really do believe that, but there's no safe level for, for driving, but we don't recommend not driving. You know, there's no safe level for going on holiday, but, you know, maybe we want to go on holiday. There's no safe level for just getting out of bed in the morning and living. So you think if you factor in all the risks it, for it, pretty much anything in life, yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd never leave your house. Exactly. You'd never get out of bed, and that can be dangerous as well. So could you see that some of the criticism would be that, yes, you're looking at the harms, but you're perhaps not really factoring in all the benefits? We've looked at the um, benefits to specific health conditions and not found that there are any. People don't want to hear this. That's right. Nobody wants to hear that drinking no alcohol is the right thing to do. Nobody wants to hear that doing something never is a good idea. Coming up... As I am getting ready, yes, I am having a glass of champagne. Taking the drinking test. One turn into another and... Do you know how many you've had? 44 standard drinks. Oh, my goodness. Could you see a day where you would think maybe, you know what, I'm just going to kick the habit? That's next on 60 Minutes. With its hipster barman mixing exotic drinks, this vibing venue in East London might look like the perfect spot for a cocktail. But there's just one issue. Redemption Bar is an alcohol-free bar. We've got a very famous song in Australia called the Pub With No Beer. You're not far off it here, are you? The boozer with no booze. I know, people said to us, what are you going to serve next? Air. <laughs> Um, it's the brainchild of Catherine Solway, who welcomes me with an ominous-sounding black magic charcoal martini. Chin-chin. 
I have my doubts. It's quite tasty. Hooray! <laughs> the business has been such a success that Catherine's now about to open up her third alcohol-free venue, which she believes is a reflection of a growing movement, particularly among younger generations, to ditch drinking. I think what's happening is, in society, um, getting drunk is being sort of dis entangled from socialising. There's a big change happening. Yeah, for sure. And you see it in the trends of young people drinking less, and now that's moving up into older demographics as well. You don't need to get drunk to have a good time anymore. You don't. And in fact, you know, Valentine's night is the biggest night of our year, so you don't even need to have a drink in order to have romance either. So who knew? Society's wow. changing. Um, you have any to help us get a sense of where we're at with drinking in Australia, Sydney socialite Melissa Couts and boutique brewer Jacob Wesson agreed to document their drinking week in these video diaries. One turned into another and uh, yeah, so five beers when I got home. Um, they were all delightful, I must say. I have a gig tonight which should be great fun and um, as I am getting ready, yes, I am having a glass of champagne in a wine glass. Fabulous, because there's no champagne glasses. Alrighty, so it's day two, Tuesday, and didn't have any beer today, actually. Um, definitely not uncommon for me not to have a beer. I'm gonna have an early night tonight. Um, it's Monday and I definitely do not drink um, on a Monday night. I didn't record a video last night because it was a um, it was a big night. Around 15 to 20 beers over a decent period of time. <laughs> Were you shocked or pleased at the end of the week? Um, I was quite pleased actually. I think overall six, okay. six maybe seven, yeah, drinks, and I had quite a. Oh, I had a little bit on, so... When you started the week, did, did you have a figure in mind of roughly what you might hit? I knew I would be under 10. We got you um, on a good week. You got me on a good week. <laughs> but having said that, I'm not a person who can consume a lot of alcohol anyway. I like it, but I just I just can't take it. My, my body just can't handle too much anyway. So even if I was going out with my girlfriends, five would be the absolute max. Anything over that, I'd be throwing up and, yeah, it'd be an ugly sight. Well, I'm glad you didn't throw up. That, yes. that could have been a, <laughs> Those home videos could have been very nasty. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, what was your tally for the week? Uh, this week I racked up roughly 44 is what I calculated standard drinks. Wow. Around is that all day. beer? Uh, it was all beer. There was nothing else this week. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so but is that... A standard week for you, or was that a big week? Definitely not. It's, okay. uh, it's a big week. Um, I had a mate's housewarming party on Friday night, which definitely upped the count dramatically. Right, Tonya, we've got a couple of samples here. Do, do you find a lot of people don't actually know what a, a standard unit of alcohol is? I get asked that question quite a lot. Professor Sonia Saxena believes there is no safe level of alcohol consumption and says most of us drink more than we realise. And then a glass of wine with a decent pour like that, is that, that's two units of alcohol there, isn't that, it? So this is the thing, it looks like it's about the same volume, but it's not, and it's different concentration. So this is about 4.5% alcohol, and so that will be one unit. Wine tends to be a bit more concentrated, so it could be up to 12% alcohol, and so this, an average glass would be two units. So her answer to kicking the habit is hitting people in the hip pocket. You want prices up? I think that it, if you have a minimum pricing, uh, that's a very bold move and that does have a big impact in the population. But you have to remember that the alcohol industry makes a lot of money. Um, so I think that some bold moves do need to come out of some of the government policies. You'd be a bold politician, wouldn't you, trying to make people pay more for their beers? If that's what it takes to change the culture in the population, then I think we need to think about that. There are some people who, you know, I think in this area, who actually are abstentionists, you know, who really would like, you know, who say, well, the safest of all is just not for not to drink, and would actually like people not to drink. Professor David Spiegelhalter is one of the most vocal critics of this study. The statistician believes the authors have got too carried away with the results 
and almost turned this into a scare campaign against alcohol. Do you think most people out there would hear, you know, no drinks a day are good for you? And most of them would just say, shut up, I don't care. Well, I think that's a real danger. These public health people wagging their finger, nanny state is the usual phrase in the UK, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ignore them. And um, I think that'd be really dangerous. That'd be terrible because there's some really good public health messages out there. You really should eat five portions of fresh fruit and vegetables a day. You should get off your fat backside and get more exercise. You should not smoke. You should restrict your drinking. All those things, you know, are really important and that are very valid public health messages. And if people obeyed those, our health would go up enormously. So it'd be a real shame if that, if you know, really important public health messages got lost by over-exaggerating the harms of small amounts of alcohol. Back in the boisterous beer halls of Munich's Oktoberfest, it's clear that there's still plenty of work to be done to convince people that indulging, or perhaps overindulging in alcohol, is a bad idea. So there's a new study out that says you, any drinking is bad for your health. Now they're saying... You called bullshit on the study. Do you think happiness is good for your health and drinking brings happiness most of the time? Therefore, it's good for your health. <laughs> There's a study out that says every time you have one drink, you're harming your health. Could you see a day where you would think maybe, you know what, I'm just going to kick the habit? Of drinking yeah. altogether? Um, no. Could you imagine being a teetotaler? No, not at all. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tom Steinfett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.